All right, so just over two years ago, I uploaded this video onto my YouTube channel where I showed how I retouched a certain style of portrait and included the behind the scenes photography. The video has done really well. It's gained just over half a million views, got 1200 comments and nearly 25,000 likes. But that was just over two years ago and a lot has happened to Photoshop and to Lightroom since then. So what I thought would be a good thing to do was update this process now to show you how I would now retouch this portrait style using only Lightroom. And when I say Lightroom, I'll be using Lightroom, the desktop version. Exactly the same can be done in Lightroom Classic. So let's have a look how I would now do it. All right, so this is the one I'm going to work on. This is a, an underexposed, one of these sort of, I guess, test shots of uh, that I did of Ian but I like the pose, so maybe there's something we can do with this. And in the original video, what I did was I actually came over to the edit section here, made adjustments to the exposure and shadows and what have you. But I'm going to leave that alone for now because now we've got the profiles up here. The one we've got available to us is the adaptive color and adaptive black and white. And this is where the AI is going to analyze the image to see, look, what do I need to do for this particular image? And it's going to apply certain kind of changes to it. So let's have a look here. Adaptive color. And you can see when I click on it, it is a little bit overcooked, but we do have the amount slider where we can either increase it or decrease it. And I'm going to take it to the left to decrease it. And I'm going to probably take it just to around about there will be good. Great thing is no changes have been made at all to the edit section here. No edits have been done. This is purely the profile. You can see, look, if I go before and after, just that one thing has made a huge difference. So I'm not going to do anything in here whatsoever. What I will do though is now go to the crop tool. I'll go to a, a three by four crop. I'll bring down the top here. I just want to make it so that his eyes here are on the upper third and I'll position them right in the middle, something like that and press enter or return. Now in the first video I did over two years ago, at this stage I'd started in Lightroom and then everything from this point was done in Photoshop. But like I said, we're going to stick in Lightroom to show you how I would now do all those things in Lightroom. So the first thing I did then was I worked on the eyes. So if I zoom in, I'll just click on 100%. You can see the eyes, we've got the nice catch lights, but they do look a little bit flat. So what I will do is we'll go to the masking section. We've got the uh, Lightroom is recognized as a person. We've got the thumbnail. I'll click on that. It then analyzes the image to tell us what masks that we can create. The one I want is the iris and pupil. So I'll tick on that, click on create, and we see now in the masking panel, the mask has been created, and now I've got all the controls that I can use with that mask, which will then affect the eyes. So let's just go through a few uh, adjustments here to bring the eyes back to life, give them a little bit more punch, obviously increase the exposure a touch, and add a little bit of contrast. But the real magic I've found that happens with eyes is when you come down to the effects section here where we've got texture, really boost up that texture, really brings out all the detail in the eyes. I love that. Bit of clarity, can't go wrong with some clarity on eyes, and dehaze. So we can really control the punch of the eye now. Look, adding more contrast, less contrast. So something like that is looking good. And I'll certainly add a little bit of sharpening. Not too much, maybe going down to plus 20, something like that. But if we now come to the eye icon, to the right-hand side here of this mask, to go press down before and after, before and after after. So already that is making a big difference. So happy with that. Obviously, this is completely non-destructive, so I can come back to it at any time. So we'll just rename it and we'll call this one eyes and close it down. The next thing I did in the original video was dodging and burning. And I used to love doing that in Photoshop, especially with a, a gray layer, blending mode of soft light, and then use the darkening and lightning to really enhance the image. But so much of that now can be done within Lightroom. And the great thing is totally non-destructive and completely editable at any stage later on. So let me show you how we do that. I'll go through this very quickly, but the simple process is this. I'll click on uh, create a new mask. I'll come down to where we've got the brush. And let's just scroll up on the right hand side here to come to the brush setting. So the important thing here is that the feather is definitely at 100 because we want all this dodging and burning to blend in naturally to each other. Um, the flow. Now, ordinarily, that would be up at 100. But what I found works really well for me is to take this down to even around about sort of maybe 20-ish, something like that with the flow. And what that means is as you use the flow and you're brushing over an area to lighten it or darken it, 
The first kind of stroke round will, will lighten it or darken it by 20%. As you go over it again, it adds another 20 and another 20 and another 20. So it gives you a lot of control rather than going in at full strength straight away. So flow at 20, density definitely at 100. This one I'm going to be using for uh, lightening. So let's have a look here. Let's just go to lighten. Uh, that's going to lighten the stuff up. So the exposed look is at plus, uh, plus 0 0.25. I'm going to take it to plus one. So plus one stop, something like that. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Let's just go to 33%. Uh, and again, I'm going to go real quick with this. I can increase or decrease the size of the brush I'm using using the right and left square bracket keys. But let's just add a little bit of a highlight onto his forehead. Just there, a few strokes around and around. I'll decrease the size of it and just add a highlight coming down the middle of his nose. Maybe some highlights on his cheeks, make them stand forward a little bit, like so, and a little bit of highlight on his lip around about there. So again, going really, really quick. If we turn that off and on, you can see there, that's the result of that. So let's just rename that one so we know what we're doing. Let's call this one Lighten. That's the dodging. So now let's get the burning, which will be the darkening. So again, I go to create a new brush or create a new mask, choose brush. This time, uh, the settings here are gonna stay the same. So look, feathers 100, flow 20, density 100, but this time we'll go for darken and that sets the exposure to minus 0 0.3. And I'm gonna go to minus one, around about that. And the great thing is later on, I can adjust these settings if I want to, if I think it's too strong or not strong enough. So now then I'll come in and do some darkening on parts of the image as well. So wherever I added, uh, added highlights, Either side of that, I add darkening, so it creates more depth and sort of contour to the face. So we had a highlight in his forehead. Either side of that, I'll brush down with the burning. And again, because I'm using that flow, as I go over it each time, it increases the how much burning is being done. So I'm going to come down the side of his face, like so. I'll brush, decrease the size of the brush, come around the beard, just to kind of real, add some shape into there. Might actually darken down his moustache area, like so and the bottom of the lip. I'll zoom in just a little bit closer. Where were we? 33, it's got a 50%. Now I added a highlight going down the middle of his nose. So what I will do as well is either side of that, just a couple of strokes to darken it. And that'll add a lot more kind of contour to the face now, like so. I'm gonna zoom in even closer. And where we've got the shape of the nose just here, what I like to do is make the brush nice and small and just trace around the outside of the nose just there, just to exaggerate that shape. And while I'm in this close, I can actually darken down the eyes as well a little bit. The outside of the eyes just here, if I just brush over like that to darken that down. Same on that side, darken that down. Do it on the other eye as well. And we could also, where the eyelashes are, just brush over those a few times, darken those. There we go, something like that. And I'll tell you what, where we've got the eyelids just here, I like to lighten those little bits up. So. Let's just rename this brush here so I know what's what. So we'll call that one Darken. But if I come to the lighten one, I'll open it up, click on the brush, and we're going to be, there you go, look, plus one. And I can just brush a bit of brightening up, lighten that top part of the eyelid there. Something like that. And you can spend ages doing this, but this is just to give you an idea. But if I now zoom out, let's go to, um, well, let's go to 25%, something like that. And if I turn off the darkening, before, after, before, after. Now look at the lightening, before and after, before and after. And if I turn off all the masks so far, look, that's before and after. So already we're really starting to see that face shape up. And what I said about the fact that the, the dodging and burning now, it's doing it in Lightroom, gives you so much more flexibility is that Let's say with the lightning one here, if I think the exposure was too much or too little, I can adjust it on the fly look. I just think that's so powerful to be able to do that. Let's just close that one down. I can go to the darkening and do the same thing there, look. I can increase or decrease it. So much control. Absolutely love that. And obviously what we've also got at the very, very top is we've got the amount slider just here where we can control it as well. All right, let's just go to fit on that. The next thing I did in the previous video is a technique that I've used so many times on portraits to really make them pop, really kind of come forward. And I call it my 2010. Again, that was only ever able to be done in Photoshop. You can do it in Lightroom really simply. This is how I do it. 
Again, we're relying on the masking section here. So I'll create a new mask. Again, I'll go to a brush. And this time I'm going to take the flow all the way up to 100. Let's just turn on the overlay because the area that I want to brush around is just the inside area of the face. So you'll see that with the red overlay. We'll brush around here. And just about there is where we want. So brush it all in. So it's covered with that red overlay. So now whatever I do is going to affect that particular area there. So now that we've got this, uh, we'll come down to contrast. Let's just turn that over off just there. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Let's go for 50%. I'll take the contrast, I'm not, and I'm going to push this a little bit so it's really obvious on your screen. So contrast to 20. I'll try and get this close. There you go, 20. And then come down to the effects, and I'll take the texture to 20, and the clarity to 20, something like that. I will actually zoom out just a little bit. So now, look, if I turn that off, that's before and after, before and after. So that's the first one. I'll rename it to 20, and then what I'll then do is get another brush, new mask, get a brush, and this time I'm only going to paint over the eyes, and down the nose, and on the mouth. And then this time with the controls, I'm going to do contrast of 10, texture of 10, let's just try and get that to 10, and clarity of 10 as well. So now, let's just go and turn that off. In fact, let's just rename it. We'll call that one 10. And let's have a look here. So before, after, before, and after. So with this one here, it's quite a, a rugged kind of look that I'm giving Ian here. So we can use those settings of 20 and 10, but you don't have to use those settings on every single portrait that you do. You might want to temper it down, especially if you're maybe photographing a female and you don't want to have that grungy kind of look. You would obviously reduce them to whatever kind of look that you think works best. Sometimes I'll only ever do the first part of it. I won't add it to the second part on the eyes and nose and the mouth. Play it by ear, see what you think works best. But for me, for this one, 20 and then 10. All right, let's just go to zoom to fit on that one there. So the next one I'll do is a fake depth of field. So we'll come out of the masking section and I'll go back into the normal edit section here. And I'm going to scroll down to where we have lens blur. Absolutely love this for creative effects. I'm gonna first of all apply it by putting a tick in the checkbox just there. It then analyze the image, say, right, what's in the foreground, what's in the background, what needs to be in focus, what needs to be out of focus, and then it's done it. And you can see the focal range is here. But if I put a tick in the visualized depth, you're gonna see that this has got like a bright kind of color on it here, meaning that Ian is pretty much all in focus, which I don't want. So we could play around with the focal range here, but what I'm going to do is just go to where it says refinement. That would ordinarily be closed up like so, but if we open it, you've got focus and blur. And these are brushes that we've got. So I'm going to go to the blur one, and I'll increase the size of it using the right square bracket key, and I'm just going to brush over it. And you see where it's getting this dark color on here, that is now going to be out of focus. So I want the clothing to be out of focus. Purely, you know, this is just my creative choice now. So we'll have that like so. And then what I will do is I'm going to brush down the side of the face like this. This is like some 70s kind of um, pop video by the looks of it. So we'll take it down to something like that. So the only part now that's in focus, I might actually blur just the top of his head a little bit as well, something like that. So this area in the middle is what's going to be in focus. So let's have a look here. We turn off the visualized depth to see it at the normal view. And this is what we have. Now, we've got the blur amount where we can either increase it or decrease it. So I'm going to take it to around about 20. It doesn't need to be a lot, but probably 20 will be enough where we can see now that the ears are out of focus, the side of the head is out of focus, but this middle part here is in focus. So that combined with the 2010 technique is really going to give it a lot more depth and contour and make it look as if the face is coming forward, especially if it's printed. So happy with that one there. Right, now what we'll do is add kind of like a glow effect to this. Um, lots of ways we could do it, but the way I'm going to do this in Lightroom, first of all, what I will do is I'm going to zoom out. Let's go to 12. I'm going to go to the masking section, and I'm going to just close that up there, go to create a new mask, and this time I'm going to get a linear gradient. 
and I'm going to drag out a gradient on top of the image like this. Now, ordinarily, what you'll see with the gradient is the fact that you get the denser part here, which is where the full strength of whatever adjustments you make will be visible. And then it gets less and less. So the actual effects there will lessen as we go further up the gradient here. But I want this to be all over the picture. I want to glow all over the image. So all I'm going to do is now that I've laid down the gradient, I'm going to click on it and drag it upwards. So now all we're left with is the dense part of the gradient. All right, so let's just go to fit. We've got the gradient just there. And all I will do is come down to clarity and just add a smidgen of minus clarity. That's all it needs to be. In the original video I did, it was just such a subtle amount of glow. Um, we can kind of mimic that now with just some negative 10, maybe negative 10 of clarity, something like that. I don't know if you'll see this as I'll turn it off and on, but let's have a look here. So that's before and after, before and after. I might increase it just so that you can see it a little bit clearer. Let's go to minus 20, something around about there. We go before and after, before and after. Yeah, so you can see that it's working. You can control how much of a glow you want with that, but negative clarity does tend to do it. But if you go too far with it, you're going to kind of like wipe out all of the contrast that you've added earlier on. So you've got to kind of play it, um, you know, take your time, look, see what works, what doesn't, how, how far can you go with it. But minus 10 for this one seems to work just right. All right, so to finish off then, let's just rename this mask. I'll call this one Glow. And the last thing I want to do is just add a bit of light shaping onto this image. And to do that, again, I'm going to use the mask in. So I'll click Create a New Mask. I'll go to a radial gradient and I'm going to click in the middle of Ian's face and drag out this radial gradient, a long, thin gradient that's going to go right down the middle of his face like that. I'll drag out the center a little bit there as well, just to sort of harden it up a little bit. And then we're going to go to invert. So now this is going to light up his face, but the rest of the area is going to go around him is going to go darker. And to do that, I'll just take the exposure and drag a slider over to the left. So something like that, I love it. I mean, it's such a simple lighting effect, but really, really does kind of make your eyes go straight towards his face. As if we use some kind of like a modifier there to really add that light just going down the middle. Really cool effect. So let's have a look at that before and after, before and after. Very cool. All right, let's just rename that. So rename, uh, I'll put, just call it lighting. There we go. So let's have a look at the before and after. Let's come out of the masking and let's just press the backslash key. So we go before and after, before and after. So there you go. How I would now retouch that kind of style of image in Lightroom that we have today in 2025. I mean, making use of those masks. There's so much you can do with those masks, but also kicking the actual retouching off using those adaptive profiles, the adaptive color, the adaptive black and white, depending on what image you're using. Really, really cool stuff. So just thought it was time to update that two and a bit year old um, retouching technique, showing you now how I do what I used to do in Photoshop and how it can be done in Lightroom, even down to things like dodging and burning. Love it. Okay, right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.